Hello everyone, welcome to K-Pop Queen for your daily reactions to all things K-Pop. Okay, it's the end of the year guys. We're finally done with 2017. We are getting ready for 2018, okay? That means more groups, more amusing music from groups we already have, just more of everything. I'm ready to collect it. But before we do that, we have to reflect. We have to talk about all the goodness that we got from 2017, okay? So here is my top 17 songs of 2017. Okay, this is in no particular order. I just started writing down songs that I really loved that year or this year and was just like really impressed by. Now, there are a lot of songs, as we know, I did the best that I could. This took me a really long time to come up with this list. To cut it down to 17 songs, it was brutal, okay? It was a brutal battle between everyone. And um, yeah, that's just, it was hard. It was hard for me, okay? Just knew that. Coming in at number 17, as we can hear right now, is NCT 127, Cherry Bomb. The reason I chose this song is because, as we know, when they hit the stage with this one, we kind of went insane. We kind of lost our collective mind. I was so shook by the choreography, by um, the visuals we were getting from them, just by the whole concept itself. I mean, it was so completely different. And, and when it happened, netizens were like, NCT, if you want to make it in here, you can't do music like this. And they were like, now nah, we got this. And they really did. They killed the stage. I spent a majority of my time Chromecasting this performance on my TV, just trying to like two step with them. You know what I'm talking about? When they two step across the stage, just trying to like follow Utah and like just failing miserably. But I loved this song. At number uh, 16, Hat Felt. I Wander and Read Me. I couldn't choose because they were both really good. But when they dropped, I just remember being so excited. I was like, yes! First time since we're leaving JYP. We're collecting, you know, our sound. We're putting it out there. We're paving our path. This is us as a solo artist, okay? That's kind of what I live for, honestly. Us really getting out there, putting our sound out there, and making sure we're being authentic with our music. And that is what Hat Felt gave us, okay? I really remember thinking, I Wander is my one. I don't need Read Me. I mean, I liked Read Me, don't get me wrong, because the beats were pulling me in. The softness, the keys. She was keeping her vocals real soft. I was like, I'm into this, but I Wander has that guitar riff that I really need. But then I kept listening to Read Me, and I was like, no, this is... This is stunning as well. And a lot of other people actually were like, I prefer Read Me to I Wander. So, you know, we were kind of all going back and forth on the songs, but we all collectively knew that she gave us two masterpieces. Why am I alone? And in at number 15 is honestly Everyday Six Comeback. <laughs> but the songs specifically to me that I really liked were Hi Hello, the one playing right now, um, I Loved You, um, I Wait, I Smile. Um, uh, I, I need somebody, I mean, the li every song, every song, every day six comeback this year was phenomenal, and honestly, it was so right of JYP to finally give day six their credit, because no lie, all of us are just kind of like, so is day six, like, what are they doing, are they in the basement playing their instruments? Are they, what are they, what's happening, we need the music, we need this! We need these harmonies, we need these lyrics, we need this music, we need these vocals, we need all of these boys here showcasing their talent. When I first heard this, like, I really felt like I'd been cleansed with holy water, like my soul was so calm. I stay away from K-Hip-Hop. I have my reasons. It gets a little iffy for me. But one thing I do know is that Sick K is the real deal. He's into his music. He's not about copying things that he's seeing. He just is about making the music. And so that is why I fuck with him on the real. So that's why I come in at number 14 is um, Higher Gang, featuring the Holy Trinity, by the way. We have to talk about this Trinity in K-Hip-Hop. K um, it is Sick K, PH1, and J Park. Whenever those three are on a song, you know you're about to get a banger. But they are also on this song called Iffy, which... Woo! When I first hit it, when I first started listening to it, I was like, I heard the beat, I heard the little things, the keys come in. I said, okay, so Groovy Room's now on my list of producers to watch out for because you need to pay attention to the producers just as much as the artist. But um, love this. Iffy is. 
it's a it's a track it is a tune it is a bop a chunk tava it is everything another song i would play for people that are just getting into k-pop and you're not trying to freak them out or anything um play them party by sick k featuring crush listen to that guitar you hoes are always trying to get me with a guitar riff i don't know why you know that's exactly what's gonna get my heart beating but it works. And this is actually interesting because when I first um, listened to the song, I don't think I liked it. <laughs> but I don't think I was listening either. I think I was just watching the music video and I wasn't really listening and I only heard elements and I was like, oh, okay, this is okay. But then I went back and listened to it like a couple days later and I was like, well, this is a banger. Put this in the playlist. <laughs> Coming in at number 13 is none other than Jay Park with the birthday remix and another one of my favorite songs by him, Yacht, okay? He dropped this pretty recently with some other tracks. Um, it was birthday remix, uh, Life is a Gamble remix, um, and there was another song that he had dropped. But I was thinking that I was like, okay, I'm into this, okay, I'm into this. And then I heard birthday and I was like, <laughs> I was like, cut the beat. Cut the beat. The other song that I really liked by him was Yacht, okay, featuring Sick K. I mean... Like, we all remember this video out here in the water on set. We don't need to go to the beach and I thought that. Put some water down, whatever. We'll put up a little thing. It'll be cool. We'll come dressed out. We'll give some choreo. Three different types of choreo and it'll be hot. Some sort of drum thing that is going on in the background that I'm hearing that's carrying some things in the background. And I just, like, I was drawn to that immediately. I'm also, of course, drawn to the honey vocals of Jay Park, but, like, who isn't? <laughs> this breakdown is my favorite part. Like, Chacha, you didn't... You did not have to go that hard with this beat. You didn't have to do it. My homegirl, Sun Me. With the track of 2017, Gashina. You guys saw my reaction. I was like, this is a hit. I love this. I love her. I don't need anything else. And Korea agreed, okay? This song was number one. People are still performing this. You know what I mean? Like, it's still playing on the airwaves. Um... Sai just did a cover at his concert, and that was so funny. It, it, it was hilarious, and he did amazing. But, like, this had such pop culture influence. The song itself is what drew me in. I was going to say it was the choreography that drew me in, but no, it's really the song because I we didn't even see the choreography in the video. Like, we didn't see the choreography in the video. So, like, besides the iconic neck and the gun, down the body, hair, like... We just knew from the beginning with this song that it was going to be a hit. And it was. Coming in at number 11 is Suran with Wine featuring Changmo. Produced none other than by BTS Sugar. Obviously, no, no, no. Well, okay. Obviously, I'm going to be honest. I hadn't really heard of her. I didn't really know of her songs before this song came out. When I heard that it's being produced by Sugar, I immediately ran to it because I'm always drawn to his productions um, in BTS. So all the songs that he's done, I was like, oh, you know, huge fan, love it. So when I heard that he produced this, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, definitely I'm going to check her out. Her vocals are so unique. You're just kind of like, you know, what else are you going to give me? What else are you going to sing for me in this song? You can't help but be drawn into her. And Changmo fits in so perfectly with this. It almost makes me wonder, like, who else could possibly do a feature on this song? Like, I almost cannot hear this song without him on it. And I think that's important. Sometimes I feel like features are dispensable. I'm gonna be honest. But I do not feel that way with Changmo. I think this was a great, great um, combination of these two artists coming together with this amazing song. Coming in. And number 10 is, I don't even, <laughs> okay, is Divanoff featuring Changmo again, Timid. Now, I didn't know who this artist was, never heard of him, but Spotify was like, girl, you listen to a lot of K-pop. And I said, yeah, you're right. And they said, okay, so I got you this uh, this little K-sexy playlist for you to listen to. Sold with all this K-hip-hop R&B songs. So I said, right, let me check it out. And that is how I got to know this song. Once again, Spotify coming out here, saving my ass, and showing me the artists I need to be paying attention to. This is the type of stuff I really like. These, like, chill beats, but, like, still impactful bass, you know? And then him coming in with these real soft, really nice high notes. Like, this is it. 
If you don't know who he is, definitely check him out. I listened to his um, latest album, Karma, and I really liked it. Um, Timid is obviously my favorite song off of it, but it's nice. It's nice. Coming in at number nine is none other than our sexy female soloist, Shana. Okay? I know you're listening to this and you're like, wait a minute. I saw your reaction. You did not like this song. You were not into it. Listen, listen. Things take time, okay? You're not going to like something immediately. I mean, let it grow on you. Take your time. Listen to it a couple times, all right? And that's what I did with Bebe. Well, Be Bebe. Bebe, okay? I listened to it, like, way after it had dropped. Maybe I came back to it a little, like, a month later, and I was like, all right, let me check this out again. And I was like... Welcome. I'm listening. She's giving us a really different side of her. You know, we're used to getting our um, real sexy songs from her, but she was like, I'm just going to scale it back a little bit, give the industry a little bit of a message, let them know where I'm at, and then I'll hit you with lip and hip, and we can go back to being sexy. But this is like the versatility of Fiona, okay? And um, I'm really glad she dropped this. I'm so glad I woke up from whatever slumber I was in and really gave this song a chance. listening to this um um album a little bit later i needed to give iu like her proper time because she's always giving me these slow songs but then she's also giving me these versatile songs like like this one and i'm just kind of like iu what can't you do but yeah i listened to it a little bit later and i listened to this and i was like <laughs> you know like it was like my aha moment and i was reminded once again of the genius that is iu this song is so complex Note wise, like, are we, like, if you listen to the chorus, she changes those keys quite a few times. She's going in and out of them, and I'm just like, girl, how? <laughs> how you doing this? And IU already has such a high register, it just it sounds me that she can switch between these notes so easily because I be getting lost. Now, of course, I'm not a vocalist, I'm a tone deaf bitch, but like, I cannot get enough of this. Coming in at number seven is Lee Ki Kwang, What You Like, and Oh Hey Yeah. I couldn't choose between them once again. They're both amazing. This mini album that he gave us is phenomenal. I love this song, especially with the video. I love the choreography that he does with it. I literally always find myself stopping in the middle of the street to like follow along with what they got doing in the video. It is super infectious, okay? It's catchy. He's coming and sounding real good. I can't get over the elements of this. Like, I cannot get over the elements of this song. Listen for a little bit. Listen for a little bit. See, he suddenly puts in these keys to follow along with the melody. He suddenly puts in these keys for the melody. And then we'll, like, I don't know, we'll play around with the bass a little bit. Like, it'll, it'll only be for one measure, not for anything else. Obviously... Oh, hey, yeah, I mean, Jesus. I heard the guitar. I heard him talking about some, oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I heard him singing breathy at me, and I said, wow, okay, so you're going to disrespect me in my headphones while I walk down the street like this. Okay, got it. Wasn't in the mindset to be disrespected, but now I know my place. Ah. Uh, this is, like, the guitar KRB I really needed from him. And I'm just, I... I can't even speak, just listen, just listen. <laughs> Coming in at number six is this iconic summer tune, G Soul Tequila. Also at number six is G Soul circles off of the phenomenal album circles i don't know if you guys got a chance to listen to that every song on there is a hit i have that on repeat for real the elements of this it's so simple it's not a lot going on honestly we have um we have this like that part i think is a keyboard effect um then we have something else a little effect going on in the background but it's really it's a really simply produced hoodie comes in Hoodie comes in with her soft vocals, which just add 
just just this another like another like seasoning on top of this already perfectly seasoned meal like it's just something a little on top to give it that extra kick the other song at number six um again is circles by Soul. i really did have the the ep on repeat but this song shook me to my core like i don't know what it was but i was listening to this and i was like i was like man we really do go in circles we really be going back and forth Going back to each other, but it's the same thing. We are just going in circles. When somebody has a higher registered voice, you sort of expect them to keep it clear, really clean. And he's like, yeah, I'm in that high register, but I'm going to get it a little dirty in the vocals. I'm going to keep it a little smoky. I'm going to give you some soul in there. Number five is Epic High, Love Story, and um, Mumbai Dong. I couldn't choose between them because both of them really had my attention when I listened to the album. Obviously, Love Story had my attention first, and then I listened to Mumbai Dong. I think it's the last song on the album, so I was like, okay, I really like this album. It's nice. But I'm going to start it over again so I can listen to Love Story. But then I found myself really like trying to get to the end of the album. Like, Mumbai Dong is there waiting for me to listen to. Um... But yeah, love story with IU. I can't get over IU doing just a little bit of the harmony on the beginning, and it's really, really high. But she still sings above it. Um, she still does the harmony for it. It's so good, and I get why like it was number one for so long. I get why it was number one on the airwaves. It's a phenomenal song. But of course, Moonbae Dong is just as good. It's featuring Crush. Um, another like amazing feature <laughs> that I could have on every song. I could listen to his music, his features, everything. I'm really becoming more into Crush as like time goes on. Um, I really love this song because there's this, that little bit in the beginning which you think is going to lead the song and it actually doesn't. It's just like a little piece that they produced and put together just to put in the background sometimes. It's not the main element of the song and I just, I don't know, I could not get over that and to this day I still can't get over it. And of course I can't get over Crush's vocals. He sounds phenomenal. Coming in at number four is Moon You by GOT7. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you know I literally could not stop singing its praises. I think that this should have been the title track. I'm surprised it wasn't. don't know how to put it into words how much I love this song. I think it's the melody. I think that melody is sort of insane. Um, the vocals are also really good. Um, Jackson also gives us a vocal, which is like, it's like a little bit of a surprise, a nice little thing for us. Young J, JB, and Jin Young really led this song for me, but like, I mean, everyone did amazing, but like those three, their vocals really shined in this song. I really love the last chorus. Jackson sounds really amazing. Um, just listen. Oh my god, I love that so much. Coming in at number three is the queen of K-pop, the reason why any of this shit exists, okay? Boa, Camo. I love Boa. You guys know that Boa was the first person to introduce me to K-pop. The absolute first person. I'll never forget watching um, Eat You Up and just being like, is this what y'all got in Korea? Like, let me find out what's up. But um, I remember when this was coming out, I was really, really excited. I feel like I hadn't gotten anything from her. No, we had. We'd gotten a few things, but I was like, you know, it, she was doing a lot of different things, a lot of different projects. Um, also really active in Japan, of course. But I was like, yes, a Korean comeback. Give it to me, what is it? And she came out with this, like, this insane video where she's like, I don't know, she's like connected to the wall. She's you know, embedded in Sarasky Crystal. She's given us strong choreo as usual. It's Boa. What else do you expect? 
Um, she was Destiny's child. Um, I'm a survivor. Oh, her in her own little jungle. Still connected to the wires. It's a, it's aggressive. It's not like your happy sounding song. It's a little aggressive, and I like I like that. So I was really glad when she came back with Camo. Coming in at number two is Red Velvet Kingdom Come. I did the reaction to it. Thank you guys so much for still watching that. I don't know how it has over 8,000 views. I don't know why you guys keep watching it. I don't know why other people are spreading it, but whatever. Thank you guys so much. Um, but yeah, Kingdom Come is the highlight on this album for me. And it was I Just. You guys remember me thinking I just was everything and I didn't need anything else. But that's usually how it is. I'll pick a song and then I'll listen to the other ones and then I'll be like, wait a minute, this other song is really good. Like, we always go back and forth between tracks. But Kingdom Come is number one for me. Vocals alone. Could sing this, the praises of this song forever. It's a technically difficult song. It's also really nice. It has a little homage to the old school with that beat run in. It's got deep bass. It's got everything. The number one song for my 2017 list is Thirsty by Taman. The original and the opposite concert version. Listen, both versions have important things in them that I obviously can't let go, so that's why it's both of them. The one that's playing right now is the original version. But um, I remember hearing this and just being like, okay, I'm, you know, it's dark, it's sexy, you know? Taman's, Taman's keeping it. Keeping it real sexy. The chorus dropped and I lost my collective mind. I said, you're going to put a hip hop beat in the middle of this? Without any warning? I didn't see it coming. I was, I'm still surprised every time I was like, I did not see that coming and I still can't believe he did it. But the Offstick version has that little break, uh, beat breakdown in the middle of it, which is really nice because he, he made the video for it with that version. And that, like, came from my ass. I'm sort of glad I didn't record myself watching it because it was not cute. This is my number one song for 2017. Um, you know, I know I said that this was in no particular order, but it was the first one that I thought of, so it has to be my number one song. Those are my 17 songs for 2017. Um, comment below. Tell me what your list is. Did you agree with my list? Or so there's some things you would have put on there that I didn't put on there. Oh, um, some honorable mentions that I have, obviously, um, are Vix Shangri-La. I was so mad that I didn't put this on the list. I'm just, I'm not pissed off that I didn't, but I just it Vix Shangri-La, um, 17 Leaders, Change Up, EXO Forever and Going Crazy, BTS, Dimples and Pied Piper, Bobby Alien, have you guys checked out his Love and Fall album? Brilliant. Um, Winner, Fool, ugh. Uh, Luna Art, I Circle, Girlfront, JBJ Fantasy, Astro, Crazy Sexy, Cool, and then Primary and Young Yo Sub from um, Highlight, Took, I, those are my honorable mentions. I'm sure there's a ton of other songs that I did not put on there that I forgot, but that's just kind of what it is right now. But again, tell me what you would have put on your list. Were you feeling my songs or you're not? I can't wait to hear from you guys. Um, happy 2017. Let's go into 2018. Ready for more K-pop. Ready for more good things. Ready to just, you know, spread positivity and hopefully get more people into K-pop and let them know that, like, this genre is coming for your faves, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back with another video. Um, I'll see you later. Bye.